Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by the family owned distributor Ran Foods. And some like really exciting news that we have is they're doing a giveaway this month for a year supply of free whole yeah ramen. And if you want to enter, you can just go to their Instagram at Ran Foods Inc. R A N F O O D S I N C and check out their pin posts. Mm. For more info we love it i love it I honestly mean, we really be eating this like this all the is time. this is a big deal if you like a broke artist trying to make it big you could save an entire year on food if you win this giveaway you just eat ran foods every single day put that money into your fucking album your short film your roth ira your roth ira your remix of world class center whatever you're doing yeah. right now. You could now. save up and buy the rights to mm. World Class Center, also known as I'm Just a Freak. Yeah, so we could use it on the pod. Mm -hmm. If you want to donate that, that would be incredible. Yeah, incredible. Honestly, I will tell you, I am a big Top Ramen chicken flavor fan. That's mm. basically, this has multiple more layers and more luscious. It has a little nice oil in there. Mm. Get you a look at this. This is a real upgrade over Top Ramen. Yeah. And Highly really recommend it. Would not lie to you. Ran Foods, Hoya, Chicken Ramen. Thank you for being our first sponsor. We love you. Thank you for paying these bills. Now on to the show. Julius, <laughs> we, uh, we're having an intervention on this episode today. Multiple, multiple commenters, we may call them fans, have chimed in to say mm -hmm. they want more Julius, they want him mic'd up, so we decided in the car today, it's time for an intervention, Julius. You need to talk on the show. I mean, I think it's fans, but like, we also, we want you mic'd up. Yeah, bro, seriously. We get, <laughs> Silent Julius. Because we get to hear the fun stuff that you say, and I think everyone should. Everybody, everybody needs yeah. a little more Julius in their life. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some, some stuff for us. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the Emma Chamberlain smoothie is here. Oh, we're going to do, we got, we got a lot of new segments for you today. We got cooking, all right? You see the cooking going down. We also are going to taste test smoothies. We're going to pit the Grimace birthday smoothie versus the Emma Chamberlain smoothie. This is a big day for smoothies. Um, Mayor Hawthorne is on the show. Julius has been more excited for this episode than anything. <laughs> Number one Mayor Hawthorne fan is in the house. Let's go. His name is Julius. And we're making poke bowls. All right. Uh, we're going to do tuna and we're going to do a little bit of King Mad Eye because as you can see here, I went to Mitsua. King Mad Eye on special today. All right. I like this King Mad Eye. You may be looking at this like, what is he about to do with that charcoal that's just chilling on the fucking stove? I will show you. I'm about to show you, my G. Okay, so some King Mad Eye laid out. I'm gonna get it skin side up. And then we're gonna sear these bad boys and then go to work on them. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. King Mad Eye is known as Golden Eye Snapper. When you kill it, you gotta do the Ikajime. I'm gonna trust that Mitsuwa copped this from Fisherman who Ikajime. All right. Friends don't sell friends Golden Eye Snapper that was not Ikajime killed. Just, it's just not a nice thing to do. But what we're going to do here is we're going to, oh, let's do it. Should we do the taste test first? Should we wait for Drew or should we just go? Yeah, you know what? We'll wait for Drew for the taste test. All right. We'll wait for Drew for the taste test. Our I mean, rice it's, is it's ready going here. down though, for sure. Yeah. Our rice is ready here. And I want you guys to know, this is not like sushi level shit that I'm doing here. This is poke level shit that I'm doing here, which is fucking cool. 
I love eating poke. It's one of my favorite things to do when I go to Hawaii. So I'm gonna show you how I do poke. And a lot of like Japanese people, Hawaiian people do this home style. Home style poke. So don't get all like fucking sushi nerd about it. But I'm doing this this way for you guys to see a like nice simple way to have poke night with your girl or your mans or, or by your, yourself or your day or your day all right so rice just finished rice now was that rude what no i was just I trying to was rude. not be i think you were being inclusive binary. right i think yeah i think that's called being inclusive i think you were being inclusive Oof. oh yeah there we go beautiful the last bit of rice here all right beautiful all right we got hot rice here now i'm gonna use the rice spat i like to use the mizkan sushi seasoning you can also make this yourself. It's a combination of mirin and sugar and salt and other things, but Mizcon does a pretty good job here. Just, that's enough for that much rice. And now just gently kind of toss your rice, gently, all right? If we were making this for sushi, I would be much more delicate. I would have a wooden bucket, all that. But look, we making poke. We be in chill. Mayor Hawthorne is in the house. He's here. Yes. The smoothies is about to get eaten. This is exciting. The rice is big chilling. I think the dogs are chill. We'll let him in. Yeah. And then look, while wifey's getting Drew, Mayor Hawthorne, I'm going to show you a technique that I learned from uh, the chef at Shunji. All right, and we'll see. I saw him, he did this for me once when I went to go eat a omakase. But Chef Jimmy at Shunji in New York would like to sear his tuna with charcoal. And with poke here, I just want to get a nice little flavor on this to give it a little bit more kind of oomph. It's not really to cook it. It's really to just give it like a hit and release a little bit of flavor on this like wild yellowfin tuna that we got here. What's up? Welcome. Yo, Welcome Drew here. is in the house. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, I'm gonna show you this technique. Stay where you are. We have two types of poke. Bro, we got the Grimace smoothie for you to try. Two. Let's, let's get a mic up, Two taste tests Julius. against the Emma Chamberlain yeah. Cold blue brew yeah. air wands. It's, it's on, bro. It's not a normal it's episode. Wow. It's like a real special episode. Uh, uh, all right, I brought this. Thank you. you got, Thank you, my um, G. Some ice. Sure. Or I'll put it in yes, there. Yes, absolutely. I got a wine fridge. Yo, I forgot. This is your first time here. <laughs> yeah. Bro, that this is this is your number one fan. Bro. Yeah, this is Julius. Our number one fan. We're we're trying to he, get him to mic himself. Yeah, one day he showed trying up. To get a, we to trying to get himself. Yeah. Up. We're like, get on the yeah. ball. If you got questions, uh, fire away. Are we still rolling, Julius? We're still rolling. Sick. Good. I will say, as you mic up, Drew, so we can use all this. We back. We back. Oh my God, the grimace smoothie. Julius fresh, came in too, here one you know? day. It looks. Fresh. It's, it's good. Fresh. It's Dude, fresh. I'm telling you, I taste that. How did the you do that? Fresh it's fire. Grimace juice for you. you got before, like we, the, before we get to the that, machine we have to, back there? We no, have no, a grimace we in our house that we milk. <laughs> we're we milking went to the D's. <laughs> but bro, I have to tell you, Julius came in here one day when we were shooting an episode and goes, hey guys, I saw Mayor Hawthorne on the schedule. Is that correct? I was like, yeah, it's to homie Drew. And he's like, bro, we wore that album out. Ah, wore it out. He was very hyped. For you to be here. Oh man, I'm We're stoked. All this is an exciting We're all day. hype. This is gonna be so dope, yeah. Yo. Most people just get like 
half a meal. We have segments for you. Oh you shit! Got segments. So you, segments. Oh man! So you you're gonna treats. show. You're gonna show how you're making the. Oh yeah, the we're doing the poke bowl. The poke bowl. Yeah. Okay. So we're sit with big. wifey. We're I'm gonna make big. the poke need, bowls for you one by one. I got some shit to say about poke in general too. So. Well, talk your shit. We're gonna. This is your platform. We're gonna yep. need to. We're gonna so need to have a full discussion on that. This is so nice, you guys. Yeah. I Thank love you. how quiet it is up here. I know, it's really it's like, How long have you been here? Two years? Two years, almost, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you guys bought during COVID, too. Yeah. It was, had to have been like, I mean, it wasn't like peak, peak, but. Yeah, but, but it was still COVID. It was still COVID. Like, there was still that 2021 year or yeah, 2022, yeah. rather. Like I was telling you, that technique from Chef Jimmy at Shunji in New York, all right? I gotta get this a little hotter, but basically, just to let you know what you're in for, Drew, we're gonna do a wild yellowfin tuna, spicy tuna poke for you, with a little charcoal sear on it. Let's go. And then we also have a golden eye snapper, King Mad Eye, King with Mad -Eye. a yuzu pepper, lime sauce. Hi. Okay. Hi. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. This is gonna be so fire. Oh, we made a little sushi Samadesh rice da. here with the mizcon, and then and then we'll finish with the the dessert smoothies. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think they'll be good in like eight to ten minutes, right? Yeah. Eight to ten, they'll be good. I think it's nice. I think it, these they've been in the freezer. Perfect. So today Perfect. we're all, we're also doing a grimace versus Emma Chamberlain. Oh, yeah. I, can't, brew, I can't wait for this. Coffee this smoothie. is a great idea. This Shout out to Esther Pavinsky who tweeted over the weekend um, and inspired this. Yes. So. She was yeah. she made us aware that they were going head to head. They were dropping yes. on the same day. She was like, I mean, I can I can <laughs> This is like Kanye oh, wow. 50 cent of her smoothies. Tweet, wow, her tweet okay. Is incredible. Yeah. So they this is these are both hot off the press. They're mm -hmm. brand brand new. Brand new. Just dropped. She said, crazy to see the Grimace milkshake go up directly against the Emma Chamberlain cold brew cookie crumble smoothie oh, this weekend. Yeah. And I was like, I have to know who wins personally. Yeah. So. Right. Slightly different tax brackets, but different. similar concept. Yep. These two smoothies were someone's college tuition. Yeah. And this is very affordable. Yeah. And I honestly haven't tasted this, but this is very good. And when we pulled up to McDonald's, they were like running out. They were like, let's, oh, let I me make it. sure yeah. we can have three. I mean, yeah. They were like, we might, we gotta check the back. Grimace is a, is a popular dude. I love Grimace. Who's your popular favorite McDonald's celebrity. guy? I mean, I obviously have to go with Mayor McCheese, because. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was gonna say the Hamburglar's mine, yes. for sure. Hamburglar goes hard. A lot of people don't even know Mayor McCheese was a, was a McDonald Land character, yeah. but. I, mean, I didn't know. Always had a special place in my heart. Mayor I'm a McCheese Grimace dude. Looks, looks sick. Mayor McCheese is sick. Yeah. I mean, he was literally the mayor of the mayor of McDonald Land. What do you call these guys? The McDonald's like crew? I, I think they were the McDonald Land. Yeah, the McDonald Land crew. McDonald or something? Homies? I don't know. McDonald's yeah. Land crew. <laughs> Yeah, let's check out and see who. Because I'm like, who else? The is on they the list? used to have like when I was growing There's up. There's a lot of them. Holy shit! There used to be. They deep, babe. Like every McDonald's had the little like McDo mini McDonald land inside that, and there was like a a Mayor McCheese like yep. little plague thing. Did you ever have your birthday at McDonald's? Oh, I had a mad birthday yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah. I had like my seventh birthday at McDonald's and I remember my aunt got me the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles NES game. One of my best birthdays ever. Yeah. One of my best. When yeah. I was growing up, McDonald's had gotten like a bad rap and this could just be very niche to like my area. I don't know if I just like, No, we're just different really generations. No, no like, yeah. People like stopped having their birthday party there because there was like people were finding like needles in the ball. Hit. Yeah, and it was that, getting. That definitely might be was, a Lynn, Massachusetts. Thing. It was getting dark. No, no, it was like <laughs> it was a known thing. Like it just started getting dark. Like it was like, don't let your kids in a ball pit. I think it vibe. was a lot of just people re starting to realize, oh shit, like maybe yeah. this ball pit is not the most sanitary idea weird shit happens in the ball pit especially oh, with high school kids i mean it was like it was just well, a it was yeah. a, an awakening for sure yeah it was a 
a nationwide awakening of like, oh shit. What's like, been happening in the bullpen? Germs, not good yeah. as, anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, even like the, the outdoor playgrounds, like, you know, all the crazy unsafe, like wildly dangerous playground yeah. things where everybody was like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. We're it's taking them away. We we care about our children's safety all of a sudden, and yeah. we're gonna start putting you know seat belts in cars and making that mandatory. It that was, felt fake. We yeah. care. You know. We like care. Fake care. Right. All right. So I'm gonna make the spicy tuna mayo here. This is QP mayo. I hit it with a little bit of agave because you guys know I always like to mix in agave. This is logama chili crisp. Now, when most people are making uh, spicy tuna mayo, they're gonna use sriracha. I like to do a little Chinese twist on it, so I use Sichuan, Lao Gan Ma, all right? I also add in a little bit of sesame oil for oomph, and a touch of minced garlic, like that much, all right? Mix that all up, just like that. Hit it with a little bit of salt. Look at this bowl. I know. Anything you make in that bowl tastes Thank good. You, bro. And a so dash of seafood soy. Boom. Tastes better. Oh, I cannot wait to like serve great. you guys this. You know? <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> does. You have like cereal, but it's like yeah. Asian cereal. Yeah, it's in Asian there. cereal yeah. fits in that bowl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so great. <laughs> And now, like I said, we're not trying to cook it with this, but this is just to, oh, look at that. Oh, see this, here we go. Woo, there this it is. This is good. There we go. That's what we needed. Yeah. That's what you needed. You can oh, tell when that's oh. working. All right, it's working now. It's working hard. This coal is working hard. Here we go. <laughs> Where do you procure a coal? Of this Binchotan charcoal. I went to Mitsua mm -hmm. and I copped the Binchotan. See, this is good. This is a higher fat content. Yeah, you're really, you're mm -hmm. really getting some, We're really in here. Some good barbecue smoke action mm -hmm. coming off of there. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Pretty looking. Things are happening. Things are really <laughs> happening. Yeah. Things are happening. Things are searing. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Damn, I'm all right. This is making me hungry. Me too. Watch Perfect. This. Perfect. Look at that. Has it been unbelievably fun needed. to eat for two? <laughs> well, it's great because he's just down to make whatever. And it's like fun for him right now. Dream situation. Like last night, I was like, I really want Dan Dan noodles. Yeah. And so... Like an hour later, they just appeared. They appeared. And I was like, this is amazing. This it's is like great. like room service. It really is. I feel like I do have built-in room service. And I love it, because, man. Yeah. I'm a like man of I service. I take more advantage of it. I'm not like, and I'm going to start now. Um, I just, just for like, I'm, I'm definitely jealous of just the, the portion yeah. thing. Like, I feel like, you know, I'm trying to keep my my svelte figure over here. But. No, but here's the hot take that no one tells you. Or maybe this is just maybe my experience, but I thought for sure, because I love to eat. Like, we'll have days where I'm like, let's just go eating. I love You know? Eat. So I thought I was going to... I was gonna crush pregnancy. I was like, I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be eating everything. I'm gonna take full advantage. <laughs> right. And the thing is, though, it's that you actually don't have my appetite is not increased it's actually yeah decreased. there's not enough room in there's here not enough room. Oh, and then ooh, when i do eat nobody tells, nobody you. tells you that they're nobody like tells you get you that. full so quick like we went and had tea yesterday with little like mm. finger sandwiches oh, oh yeah i, I, I knew that this. was coming i love it and you know the food <laughs> fire when the smoke alarm goes off <laughs> fire drill this guys. is the first time since the first episode smoke alarm's gone off fire drill Clearly, uh -oh. i haven't been making enough fire food in here Fire drill. Fire drill. Oh, you want yeah. me to open this one too? Um, yeah. And then but look I'll, at that I'll now. So I can figure out how to how that works. Amazing. Oh, no worries if not. Open. No. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys figure.
figure out how that works. You're good. Look at that. We are good. Maybe Justin needs to open also. Commercial break. Commercial commercial break. break. There it is. Oh, they go out. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Perfect. Open this up more. Somewhere else. People on the pod are gonna love this one. The smoke alarm going off. Wow. In the right. headphones. I think we just Amazing. Let it go. Amazing. It'll, it'll, we tried. It'll shut off. We gave effort. You guys did your thing. Thank you. You know who's gonna love this episode? My mom. Yeah. Who sets off the fire alarm every time she cooks. Every time. Clockwork. All right, we're ready to eat, guys. It's kind of a nice beat. Would oh. you like to sample this or? I mean, this could be on the next Should we just turn, take it? Oh, oh, oh. oh man, we oh, had shit, it. Man. I know, it was so close. Man, it'll turn off. It'll turn off. All right, first I'm going to do the Yuzu Koshu one for you guys. The King Mad Eye. Do we want to just like pause until this is, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, should we? We've set it off before. Yeah, but not this long. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Let's give it like five minutes. Yeah, okay. I agree. A solid All right. Five. We'll give it five minutes. All right. I feel like we are, we really uh, are survivors right now. Like we, we are. We're we, bonded. We really this. went went through. The show was back. Something and made it out the other side. That was not easy. The King Mad Eye is about to hit the table. Wow. We can all rejoice. The smoke alarm stopped. <laughs> Shouts the smoke alarm. Okay. All right. Beautiful. We'll start with this. We'll get you guys some more. Okay. A little seaweed seasoning over the top. And some shiso. Oh. Sometimes I really do feel like Ina Garten when I finish a dish here. I go, oh, oh. He's in his Ina era. Ina era, man, that's a good era to be in. Mm -hmm. The Ina era is the one that you want to be in. Let's settle this. Is it Ina or Ina? I've always, I've always said Ina, but King Mad Eye. Oh man. Because we will say in the same conversation. Highly Instagrammable right here. Highly. Highly Instagramable poke. And Julius, I saved you a full loin of tuna. So don't you worry, my G. There's a whole tuna loin for you. Got you with the loin. Mm -hmm. All right, can can we talk about poke in general? Please. For a second? Yes, absolutely. Because this may be one of the bougier statements that I've ever made, mm-hmm. but I think you should have to have a license to poke. To poke. Yeah, like I Bristol agree. Farms may not, maybe shouldn't be pokeing. I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think that Albertsons should be no. allowed, allowed to poke. Yeah, I think like they're cool to uh, chicken. Fried chicken, Albertson's yeah. fried chicken. Great. Phenomenal. There are so many chickens out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did just have a chicken shortage, but Albertson's in general, chicken. they can handle chicken. I see what you're saying. I just think the the high quality sushi grade, poke grade tuna and salmon, it's so it's such a rare commodity, and they're all disappearing. Mm-hmm. Yep. There, I think you should have to have a license. You should have to apply. Or you, you should, should be like li- just like just like waiver. Fugu, just like Fugu. How you got to get a license to do the to be a to cut the um, poisonous fish yeah. out. You got to train yeah. for like years and get a Yikijime. license. Yeah. 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 I mean, poke at your own risk. Mm-hmm. When you if you want a poke that. personal poke at home. Wonderful. Go, do your do your That's, thug fizz. Yeah. Yep. But if you're gonna open your old nasty old neighborhood like mm. chain cheap poke yeah. spot, I, you're just decimating the fish population for nothing, and, and you're providing no 
nothing. Yeah, no like, real value. No value for anyone. Yeah. All right. On that note, bon appetit, y'all. Itadakimasu. Wow. Oh, ho. have you spent a lot of time in I Japan? I have spent bro? a lot of time in Japan. I fuck with Japan. Edison it's Chen cool. really fucks with Japan. Told it's people one of my favorite didn't need to go places. anywhere else in Asia but Japan. Japan mm. is also one of my favorite places. I won't go that far because nah. I think there's a lot of other incredible places in Asia, but mm -hmm. yeah. Tokyo, Japan, gotta be my favorite, I think, mm. as of right now. Mm -hmm. You got. But I have also me. spent the most time there. Yeah. All right. Damn, this is hitting, bro. Hitting, hitting. Talk to us. What are the hitting. tasting notes, you know? Mm -hmm. What are the tasting notes for you? All right, so the charcoal definitely coming through think? with it big is. umami mm -hmm. flavor. The charcoal is doing what it needs it's to do. It's doing what it needs yeah. to do. It's present. And it's doing nothing bad also. Like, mm -hmm. it's... It is only adding. Yeah, like I struggled a little with the technique first time using no, no. it on a fish that was mm. too lean, but oh, it the flavor works. It's incredible though. Yeah. And, yeah, and also, if anyone comes for me for eating raw fish while pregnant, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, fuck him. We've mm -hmm. talked to the doctor. He said it was cool. He said it was cool. He's a chef. Mm. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Mm. I mean, you've if been you wanting raw fish for a while. If you think I've been craving, if you think that pregnant women in Japan ha are not eating, highly sushi? recommended for them to be eating sushi. What you just shouldn't be eating fish with high mercury. Right, content. right. And the whole thing is that this is a lot, which is a lot of tuna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't done this at all. This is my first time, and I waited until third trimester. Mm -hmm. So no one's mad. This is delicious. I this is yeah. delicious, dude. Mm. Tell me about this sauce. Mm. Really simple. Yuzu kosho, which is just like pepper and yuzu. Mm -hmm. um, the juice of one lime. And I hit it with a little bit of nice citrus ponzu. Mm -hmm. And then um, salt. Yeah, that ponzu is shining right now. Shiso leaf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I'm a big mix up the poke too. Mm -hmm. like, I am too. Some people they be eating off the top, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> this is really a vehicle for rice. That's right. what I feel. Mm -hmm. I don't like a poke with a lot of lettuce. Oh, I hate it. I'm like, I don't want no lettuce. No, I want rice and fish. Right? I want yeah. rice and fish. And I don't want no ginger. You know, like I put your guys seaweed on top because people tend to like that, but I like to put seaweed on the side and eat it separately, mm -hmm. and then just mix fish. Yeah. But yeah, we did this for Mayor because I started a rumor that he's health conscious. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> we went to the cheesecake and I don't know if I love this rumor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, Ann Arbor. I mean, Michigan is not a healthy place, unfortunately. And honestly, you, you made one of the best Coney dogs I've ever had. Yeah, come on, dude. Wait. I missed the Coney Bro, dog. Bro, he's got to tell you about this Coney. Cause, miss the Coney's, unfortunately. Cause you know they, they'll, they're, they're coming back. Well, here's the they're thing. They're coming back as I soon as like football season comes back. I feel like I got left out. Back. Yeah, I got left Bro. out of last year's football season. I'll tell you something. Because I was just being like such a bitter sports fan's <laughs> wife. She was so <laughs> mad that I had made another sports fan friend. I kept coming back no. from your house and telling her no, about no, no, no. it. And you notice That's I didn't bring her. That's not You start rumors. <laughs> I was not mad. Rumor starter. I was like so happy, but I was not getting the invite. So I was like, that's fine, whatever. I'm not invited oh, to any, like sports and events. You're that's, that's officially fine. invited Thank forever, you. yeah. Because you guys have, I mean, you're both Michigan fans, right? We are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which for the, for the people, for those that don't know. So I grew up in, I was born and raised in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went to University of Michigan for oh, wow. undergrad. Got an actual degree from that bitch. Mm. Um, and I've just, it's in my, it's in my blood. Like my, yeah. my dad has had season tickets to Michigan football at the big house my entire life, as long as I've been alive. Wow. Yeah, what was the and name of your crew? Does. My boy Sparks was telling me about it. Olympic something? AML, Athletic Mike League. Yeah, yeah, Athletic <laughs> Mike League. That's what you were doing out there. Yeah, that was the, that was my hip hop crew in mm -hmm. high school. Wow, I love that. Um, yeah, I mean, we just all played basketball together. Oh, word. Uh, in sports, like, so, 
Yeah, that was as, as much as our like high school brains could figure out. We, we play sports, so we're the athletic rap group. It's mm-hmm. fucking fly. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, those guys are still, like, I'm on a big group text with them all. Yeah. We literally, like, we talk all the time. I fucking love it. Those guys all came That's to my good. wedding in mm-hmm. Detroit, and they're still, like, all the homies to this day. It's great. It's yeah. really dope. No, people always confuse how I became a Wolverines fan, but for me, it was I watched pro football before NCAA. Mm-hmm. And then the Desmond Howard year, everyone was projecting him to go to the Washington Redskins, yeah. the Redskins at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was just like watching all season to be like, yo, we're going to get this dude, Desmond Howard. We're going to mm. get him. And when we got him, I was like, yo, that's my guy. And then the next year, I believe it was Tyrone Wheatley. Yeah. The Tyrone Wheatley year. And I was like, yo, I love big Tyrone Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley was amazing. And I just became a Wolverine fan. We still fan. have not, ha- there hasn't been a back like him. No. Just big boy. And then I ended up, you know, being with someone for a long time who was a Michigan student and I was in trouble. And my PO, the only place she'd let me travel was Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. So I got season tickets and would go to every game. Really? I was there. Braylon Edwards, double OT Penn State, double OT Michigan State. Number one in the end zone. Yeah. Saw Chris Perry, what, 23 yard run? 23, yeah. Against Uh Ohio State. And we beat Ohio State. That's right. That was incredible. You heard that? Isn't that a mm-hmm. big rivalry, Michigan Ohio? You heard that? Mm-hmm. Say it in all three cameras. We beat Ohio we State. We beat Ohio State. <laughs> right. I'm excited for you to join the hang, though. I'm excited. Because I'm Drew's so wife excited. Makes one of the best salads I've had, the Traverse City Cherry Salad. Oh yeah, the Michigan Cherry Salad. Yeah, yeah. she she like kind of, you know, so she grew up in Orange County, mm-hmm. but she's definitely been like indoctrinated into the Michigan side of my family. So I love that. She has been shout out to her. She has really been embracing the Michigan. Michigan low key got some of the best food though. I was like, going to say best deli in the world. I would have to say is in Michigan. Bro, we know how to eat. Mm-hmm. Yup. Zingerman's deli. It's a sleeper city for food. Have you been babe? I haven't, but I hear people talk about it all the time. That's why everybody's fucking fat. Mm-hmm. We we know how to eat. What would you say is classic Michigan food? Um, I've never been. Deli for sure is big. Okay. Um, Greek food mm-hmm. oh, wow. is actually really, really huge in is Michigan. There's a big Greek population? There's a massive Greek population shit, in okay. Detroit. And most of the... So, like, in Michigan, any kind of Greasy Spoon Diner, mm-hmm. we call it a Coney Island. Mm-hmm. Oh. And that's where the Coney Island hot dog comes from, which oh is a hot dog with chili, mustard, and onions. And it's like, a, it, but it's like a chili sauce. It's yeah. not really, it's not like you're taking chili and just like putting it There's on. There's not like beans. There is. is so there. it's like, it's definitely more of a sauce than it is an, okay. a, a traditional chili. But a Coney Island hot dog, definitely huge. And the Greeks usually own those diners. Mm-hmm. Okay. Greek mm-hmm. people love owning a diner. Yeah. The Coney's or the Greeks. Mm-hmm. Well, I look forward to you making Coney Island dogs for Michigan games. Yeah. Yo, I mean, United I'm looking year. forward to making them. And have you guys, do you guys go to the games? Like, have you been to a Michigan game together? Or is that... We yeah. have never been together, but we actually haven't <clears throat> known each other that long. Yeah, so, no, this but is like a this is a thing fish. that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have to I go. Agree. We got to go. I mean, my dad still has seasons too, so... Oh, wow. Um, we need to go for sure. Exciting. How'd you feel about this set, the spicy tuna? I, I, I can't even get like a word in because I don't want to stop eating this. Yeah, I plowed through my shit. Yeah, this is, this is this crazy, is dude. Man. This is really crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to the next segment of this show here. Oh my God. While you guys, com- do, do you guys continue to enjoy? We'll just move I'm slowly. I'm a really mm-hmm. slow eater. Please, be slow. Because like... We have so much planned for this episode. I'm surprised we're getting... We have, we've gotten two, two dishes already. 
I really we am like planned. the slowest eater. And my wife will be like done Enjoy and it. is like, what is wrong with you? Why are you still eating right now? We inhale our food. You <laughs> will like inhale it. Yeah, we And I inhale. will be over here like just <laughs> trying to put the perfect bite together, really savoring the flavor. I can't do that right now. I mean, especially I if it's something but... that is on, on this <laughs> level. Yeah, no, I agree. I wish that I had your ability to do that. I'm a very patient eater. I eat for sport. <laughs> like, I'm like, how fast? I've never not cleared a plate. I don't know what that's like. Even if I'm the most full I've ever been in my life, can't walk, can't move, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear the plate. You guys don't- My shit is cleared out. You don't yeah. strike me, neither one of you, as Soylent Green people. No. Like one, we have, um, we're hedonistic. We have a cousin. So like, there, there's, it's a big divider of people in the world. Diet? <clears throat> people who, if they could, choose to just take a pill and they would never have to eat. Yes. Oh, I don't there know. There are a lot, mm -hmm. a yeah. shocking amount of these people out there. Yeah. And I ca just cannot relate in mm. any way. No. I, to me, eating good delicious food is like one of the true joys of life and yeah. if you take that away it's like what do you got it really is number one joy of life for me number one is sex <laughs> number yeah. two that would be like you. finishing a fire chapter in a book just like a fire sentence mm -hmm. i have to say i do i do enjoy that mm -hmm. three punching somebody i don't like in the face Oh my God. <laughs> Four, I would have to say food. And then five is like walk off three at a basketball game. Those are the five best feelings in life. See, I literally have three. I'm combining cuddling with sex, just FYI. I literally have three and they could all be like, in, you could do them all together. You could do them all simultaneously. Oh, yeah. Sex, wow. food, and laying in bed. Laying in bed, watching a movie, laying in bed, whatever, cuddling, anything, whatever. But even just like you could make, you know, you could put A1 on a foot. And that's mm. sexy yes. to me. But it's like, I like eating, yeah. having sex, then eating in bed. Yeah. The ordering Chinese food and eating that in bed on yeah. a tray. And then watching a movie, like, you cannot touch. When I said vibe. sex number one, it includes eating your foot with A1. That is, it's all in one <laughs> choice of sex. I have yeah. to say, Emma Chamberlain got smoked by Grimace Dog. Wait, I'm really? so wait, 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 wait. No. We're, we're, we're in here already? Emma. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm taking a break. All right. No, no, no. Okay, actually, okay. we got to get... Actually, no, yeah, yeah. Top, yeah unless time. you had a, also a ranking of your favorite feelings. You I know? feel like, yes, we I want to know yeah, your top got, I want to know how Mayor, yeah. Mm. Man, that's tough. I feel like that's one of those, like, top five album things that's so... That's the next that's question, That's so though. tough. Oh. I, I, Where does punching someone in the face you don't like ring? <laughs> face you don't like uh, up there? It's an uh, it's an incredible feeling. Yeah, but I can't I can't put it anywhere close to sex or eating a delicious meal. I mean, mm. eating a delicious meal is really up there for me. It's up there. Yeah. Damn, it's I really, really like up punching there. somebody I don't like yeah. in the face. Wow, Performing there, right? in front of a crowd oh, yeah. that is there for you. One of the greatest feelings I just ever. Ask you, do you think it's better than sex? Because I've heard like in documentaries, oh, so like bad. Mick Jagger will be like, it's better than sex. And I'm like, I've never done it, so I don't know. As far as, I mean, I gotta say, as far as like, rarity and and like the amount of people that get to experience it in the world which is very few yeah, yeah. and like scarcity factor there's maybe something there mm -hmm. where like it's even you know even when i'm performing on stage it's very rare that it's like a sold out crowd that is there for me that is like just going bananas yeah like singing your those, shit back to you. Those moments, be better. Wow. I would say. Yeah. Wow, yeah. better than sex it or makes food. Sense. So. It makes sense though. I it's love that so you euphoric. like it. I love it, cause me, I'll do speaking engagement, I'll do big events and like MC and host or whatever, but like obviously I've never written a song that I'm performing live, have never experienced it. Like yeah. even when I fought the boxing match and won live, <laughs> there was like, a couple thousand people there mm -hmm. that was fire too. but like that had to be amazing crazy 
crazy. I was punching this guy that said I owed him money for like graffitiing the vice office. Oh my God, Got that to had to be him. amazing. It was amazing. We but I'll tell you, it's, it one time. that, th that just feels like, like so yeah. animalistic too. Like, yeah. But having people there didn't make it any better than sparring at the gym. For mm -hmm. me, it's just an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. But like as a musician, that is an ill experience you get to have. I did get it's to perform really rare and down special. and out with Cameron once. That shit was crazy. Oh, but wild. I just wanted to hide. Like the whole time I was like, I cannot wait to get in the car and go home. Mm. It was yeah. like, funny. Because I, I, people I think I'm like an extrovert. Also. Yeah, they think I'm an extrovert, but I'm just like, once I'm out there, I'm like, oh, I want to go home. No. I think mm -hmm. you're both. I think you're a little bit of like an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But I, I can imagine that I think feeling. we all are that yeah. to a certain extent. Because mm. I love a great scene. Like when we make a great scene, you know, like on Wong's yeah. Water Boogie, I'm like, oh my God, feels good. But for me, the performing, I don't think I have that part of me that wants to be on the stage in front of people. But mm. I love... I get it with you. Do you know what I mean? You know like, what? It makes I sense. was never that person. I didn't. I wasn't the person that wanted that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In in all of my prior musical endeavors, I was always the DJ who was like in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While everybody was else was up front doing their thing, getting all this shine, I'm in the back DJing. You know, with my headphones on, whatever, like yeah. doing my thing back there, which is very Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I was the bass player in the band. Mm. like you know also kind of in the back in the rhythm section next yeah. to the drummer yeah. you know vibing not singing just vibing and the you know becoming like a solo act that sings in front of people was not ever my goal at all yeah but it found wasn't you wasn't something i was trying for yeah but it found me and i tried it out what it's it also was like a huge learning curve i was terrible at it in the beginning and then i've gotten better yeah but you know it's a constant like no you it's a you constant this, work in progress you know i'm always 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 trying to get better at it you know we we're we're big on like every show that we do you know we'll do a 30 city tour or whatever yeah Every show, we, we get off stage, we review wow. and <clears throat> make adjustments, you know, this part of this, you know, this transition wasn't smooth, didn't work as well as we thought it was gonna, yeah. this song in this spot in the set, yeah. this <clears throat> note that I tried to hit, didn't, I didn't, didn't hit it, didn't, yeah. couldn't yeah, get yeah. there, I, we need to revamp and we're, you know, constantly making improvements to the show and hopefully every night it gets a little better and a little that's better. so dope what do you yeah. I, have, I have two questions yeah one when was it that like mayor hawthorne like awoke like when was it where you're like oh the first moment you really enjoyed mm. Mm. doing it and then the second part of the question is what do you think is the best show you've ever done wow um okay the the Man, the Mayor Hawthorne thing is so weird because it kind of like blew up before I even did anything. Like, it was just so strange. It was such a, a magic, like, conversion of so many things that happened. Like, a perfect storm of things that happened. The dawn of Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where early on, People don't even remember this anymore. Twitter's not even that old. How old is no. Twitter? Eight years old or something like that? No, no, no. 20, it has to be... 15 years. Yeah. 15, around 15. I don't even think it's that old. No, it is oh. for sure. Okay. Twitter was just kind of... Uh, this was 2008. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I okay. remember because Bauhaus opened <clears throat> the year... Like around the year your album came out and it was one of the only albums we yeah. play. Like all the way through. At the time... Nobody knew how to use Twitter yet. It yeah. was like people were still <clears throat> trying to figure out what the hell it is and like how you use it and like what what we're gonna do on here. Which was incredible. Which was a cool time. Yeah. It was. It was like a really cool time. You would like celebrities getting in like big beefs on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. But also at I the time it. it was very cool to just go on Twitter and just be like, yo, just heard this song. Mm -hmm. I think this shit's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this. Yeah. Which now people don't do anymore. Nobody would 
ever do they unless do they were getting anymore. paid. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. really cool. Yo, everybody, because they realize the value of it now, they got short, they got alligator arms. No one just puts up shit they like really? anymore. Yeah. Unless I'm they're not friends annoying or they person get paid. that like I will post. I was song actually on, do. from Spotify. I will like post it on my yeah. story. And I know everyone makes fun of people that do that, but I'm just like, no, oh, I'm vibing. I was actually song. thinking about recently about trying to like really embrace that and go like yeah. go back to like yeah. my Twitter, whatever, um, yeah. Instagram, whatever I can do, leave how it is, whatever, mm -hmm. TikTok, whatever. But Twitter specifically i'm only gonna be like here this i think this is dope i think yeah. this is dope i like i this. love that. i think we I need like more this. of it i think you actually i love that you do it because you don't have that part of a brain that worries about the value of it you're generous uh, with shit. yeah no i don't care i know a lot of people that like they don't repost shit they don't like mm -hmm. point people to things mm -hmm. they point only to themselves and mm -hmm. i agree with you man like well i don't even think it's alligator arms i just think people don't want to be perceived as like corny and but and it's not corny to post things that you like but i think the internet has kind of made Made people feel that way like, people feel like i've that, seen right? memes about yeah. like nobody cares about the song you're posting on spotify and mm -hmm. i'm like well i don't care that you don't care like i i don't know like i've always used the internet to just like express my feelings and if i'm if i'm into a song and i'm like this is how i feel i like almost need ever to know that yeah. i've shared it i'm like i want everyone to know it deserves to be shared if i also yeah. if i'm following you it's because I think you're cool, and I want probably Same. want probably want yeah. to know like what oh what else God. what cool things you like. I you know? love when somebody like drops a playlist. I'm like, oh my God, new! I can now explore the music you like. That's so cool to me. A, a playlist, a, a sushi place in Tokyo. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I want to know that cool place. That's, That's when the just, internet was yes. fun. And we were just talking about that. I was like, le I love when people used to do like top lists and be mm -hmm. like these are my top places <laughs> and whatever and i feel mm -hmm. like people still do it but yeah. they're so manufactured everybody want, the problem is everybody wants to get paid for it now yeah, yeah. and everybody thinks that they can get yeah. paid for yeah. it now and so then also wants to do it anymore. people are haters like oh you think people are listening to what you want to listen to mm -hmm. or you think you should and it's like no nah, bro everybody should just post what they like mm -hmm. who yeah fucking it's cares? tough it's tough because uh, there's a lot of people who are making money at it and treat yeah. it as like you know there's being a social media yeah. Yeah. person is a job now it's a yeah. real yeah. it's a legit job I'm that, that which a lot is, of people which is have cool like I, I don't knock that i think that's really cool i think people that like genuinely like i follow people on tiktok that will do new music fridays and be like these are the albums that i listen yeah. to and i'm like that's so cool and it is i cool. follow it and i find out about new stuff through that but there, there is a pocket of it that feels disingenuous. My, my favorite accounts are the chaotic ones. Like Freddie Gibbs will post like 20 of the best videos or memes you've ever <laughs> yeah. seen. Yeah, that's the best. Freddie Gibbs. Devin the, Troy, the just like yeah. 70 yeah. fucking hilarious memes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, like just post everything you think is fucking funny today. It, it's yeah. comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Twitter is the best for comedy by it far. Is. Yeah. Twitter's my favorite Twitter's app. the only funny mm -hmm. social media. And then it like drips yeah. down from yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It does. Know? But we derailed you. So you okay, started so on Twitter. Twitter, yes. well, or so no, people started sharing My record, stuff. my Are first record just speech? came oh, out okay. right at that time when it was like cool for celebrities to be like, you know, mm. go on Twitter and talk about things they, they liked. And, you know, Justin Timberlake and oh. John Mayer and Alicia Keys and all these cool people, you know, Snoop Dogg, whoever, like, all these cool people went on Twitter and they were like, yo, Mayor Hawthorne, this, I think this song is dope or mm -hmm. this album or yeah. whatever. And it's just a thing that would never happen anymore. Mm -hmm. But I caught that, that, you know, gust of wind to the back and then every, you know, it just spiraled and everybody started checking it out. We happened to do, so like, back in the in like the 60s and 70s there were a lot of these like kind of um not a like kind of gimmicky almost picture shaped like shaped vinyl records mm -hmm. picture discs and and um yeah what well, i'm blanking on what do you even call it a shape a sh you know a a shaped vinyl okay, yeah, that was yeah. like in the shape of a star or in the shape of a triangle or oh, you know, whatever yeah. and i had a few of them like from bobby caldwell or 
Marvin Gaye and Diana Ross had one wow. that was like in the shape of a heart and mm -hmm. it was red. And I was like, why don't we do this for my first single? Yeah. Cause I, I just knew about it from seeing it- Collecting vinyl. From collecting vinyl. But I didn't, what I didn't realize was that there was like a whole generation of people who had never seen that ever. Yeah. And when they saw it, they were just freaked out. Like they were like, holy shit, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It's a red heart shaped record. How does it even work? And like, I was like, I just, you know, I just didn't think it would be that mind blowing for yeah. everybody. But then I realized, oh my God, nope, these people have never, nobody's ever seen this. Nobody's done it in 30 years. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole new generation of people who had never heard of this. And people, people were buying that record, didn't even know what was on it. Just thought it looked cool and would buy it and just put it on their wall. Didn't even know it was me or yeah. never even listened wow. to it. Just thought it was cool. So that, we had that going and then, yeah, I mean, and it was just like uh, a crazy spiral of things. And uh, the, the, by the time I did my first ever show, it was, I, it was the, my first show I ever did was sold out. Wow. Which is crazy. I mean, it was, it was at this place called the Continental Room in Orange County. What? And that's crazy that, that was, it was in Orange County and Orange then your County. wifey from yeah. Orange yeah. County. Yeah, and then, I, and then yeah, <clears> years, so years later. We're in a up. simulation, bro. I know Everything we are, right? So I feel that all the time. All I feel the time. like that all the time. <clears throat> Fuck, I didn't mean to cut you off though. This is no, a very no, no, good, good story. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, so my first ever show I ever did as Mayor Hawthorne was sold out, which is amazing. like, which is so fucked up because so, I mean, not, not that no. I didn't do, you know, a decade of shows for three people prior to that but yeah just in different you know various projects yeah. or whatever that i was involved in but the mayor hawthorne thing it was almost like it was bigger than me even like it had just it had gotten so big before i even did anything yeah you know was that I, weird for it was you, weird though? yeah like to experience it was weird i i had never sang in front of a crowd like that as like the front man yeah and that was the first time. That was the first time <laughs> I had really <laughs> ever done it in front of anyone. And I, I, we, the, the record blew up and I was like, holy shit. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like ha put a band together. I didn't, I didn't have a band. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I was love this. I played player. every instrument except, yeah. for, except I, my, my college roommate played a little guitar on the first records. Mm -hmm. I played everything else. I wrote the songs and like recorded it all myself mix it all myself Damn. and then i was like oh my god i'm gonna have to like ha perform this yeah. like i can't do it all myself so i'm yeah. gonna have to get a band yeah. i had to like figure all that out and it was it's really crazy wild. it was like it was nerve-wracking yeah. bro it's crazy to hear because on it like me and my brother were listening to a crazy about we thought it was like a big label thing i had no idea that like you had to like piece this band yeah. together yeah. for the first show well then the one song exploded yeah. and then it was like oh my god i'm gonna have to just make a whole work album out. of yeah just yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. work out yeah. i only ever had two songs that was it i had that the a side and the b side wild. that was that was the, i thought that was going to be the end you guys Yo, i thought that song was so had so much utility it was like a song you could just send to somebody to break up with them <laughs> <laughs> right. Wait, I'm right. no not you no <laughs> never <laughs> never that happened never. that happened a lot and i would get like notes from people no. like oh thanks for making my job like super easy i just Damn. sent this to my man or whatever and here's a heart shaped <laughs> record. Here's the illest breakup work song out. on a heart shaped <laughs> record. But then I would also have people that would be like, yeah, I met my wife at your show and like we played your music at our wedding. And I'm like, you guys realize this? these are breakup yeah. songs, yeah, these right? Are these songs. are like bitter breakup songs. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they don't care. It just it sounds, yeah. it sounds nice. Yeah. Were, was that the yeah. headspace you were in when you wrote the record? Man, I wasn't thinking about nothing when I wrote that record. If you listen to that song, it's so, it's like a nursery rhyme yeah, almost. Yeah, it's yeah. so, it's so remedial. Dude. Yeah. It's like. But it's perfect. But I was really making stuff that I just was like, thought I could sample royalty free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I had gotten like hit on a couple of the, like we, I remember we sampled 
like mm. an Eddie Kendricks record or something yeah. like that. And he sued us for like all the money that we made on the whole Fuck. record. Damn. So I was like, you know, being the thrifty Jew that I am, I was like, well, fuck that. I'm not paying. I'm not giving all the money to somebody else. Yeah. You yeah. know, because at the time it was like sampling was like the it That's was the way to make it music. was hip hop. It was like mm -hmm. the way you made music. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't know there was nobody knew any other way to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, well, you know, my dad was a musician, taught me how to play bass guitar when I was real young. Um, I can play a little piano, I can play a little guitar, a little bass or whatever, mm -hmm. dr little drums. I was like, I'll just make my own soul samples yeah. and then I can sample myself royalty free and I won't have to pay nobody yeah. anything. Yeah. And then the, the, these fake samples that I was making were the thing that exploded. Yeah. And then it was like, oh shit. That didn't didn't work the way that I thought it was gonna yeah. at all. But also my favorite doo-wop songs, it's like remedial lyrics, it's just a hook over and over. Yeah. You know, like <clears throat> that's some it's of the simple. best shit. It's really simple. Yeah. People people who are not the thing one of the things that like music people have a really hard time with, especially like real players and like people who grew up playing in the church who can like really yeah. play their instruments session or guys. like session guys. Even like <clears throat> You know, people who grew up listening to Steely Dan and Quincy Jones or whatever. What what a lot of music people don't have, like, I have a really hard time wrapping their head around is that your average music listener has no fucking idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing. Like, they go to a show, have no understanding of what's happening on stage, like who's making what sound, like how anything is happening. For sure. They just know how it feels. Yeah. And that is a tough thing. That's it's why even- It's hard for me. Yeah, that's like the idol satirizing music and that the, the song they made to laugh at is a hit. That, that happens <clears throat> all the time. It happens so yeah. often that yeah. people go to make like a, a parody version of a song and as a result, they they dumb it down, mm -hmm. and that and then there that's the thing that explodes. Yeah, I love the song, but around the same time you came out, there was another very catchy song, "Aloe Black, I Need a Dollar." Mm -hmm. Right, and it was super super simple. Was the theme we song? We were label like, mates also at oh, Stone Throw Records. Yeah. Oh word! You guys I, were all Stone Throw. I, I knew Aloe Black from way back. I had done records with Aloe Black. Yeah. Way before that, mm -hmm. even we met at the Do Over. Oh, which is where I met a ton yeah. of people. Which is that party actually where LA, I met yeah. where I met Peanut Butter Wolf. Yeah, and yeah. Jamie runs that party, right? Jamie Strong. Yeah, Jamie. Shout and out Jamie Strong. Shout out Haycock. Yeah. Chris Haycock, and then Aloe Black was the host. Were of the do over. That was a big fucking party out here. It was. It still is a yeah. big. It's still going. I think mm. it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a big deal. And that was where I met Peanut Butter Wolf when I moved to LA too. Yeah. And I gave him, I remember giving him my, like a demo of the rap beats yeah. that I made. <clears throat> and he was like, yeah, these are trash beat. Like, I he fuck was with like, Wolf your I rap beats are not good, man. Yeah. And, but he was like, these, like the samples that you made, these are dope. Like yeah. you should do this yeah. instead. Yeah. And he was kind of the one that saw that. And so you wanted to like be the alchemist. I wanted to be the alchemist. Yeah, you you wanted to be Al, and then it was like, but you're shout actually a soul Al. singer. Yeah, shout out Al, yeah. man. But also Is like one, also one of the first guys that I connected with when I moved to LA. Yeah. All I right, say when I first I'm, moved out here, I, I ran into Peter Butterwolf at a party, mm -hmm. and I was like, bro, I've been fucking listening to your shit forever. Yeah. And then he just kind of like I think he moved like Far East Side or something like that. I just like never saw him again. But I was always a huge fan. Yeah, I mean. Stone Throw Records really was like the place that everybody wanted to be. I mean, that's where, and then, you know, coming from Detroit also, Jay Dilla had yeah. just moved from Detroit yeah. to LA yeah. and signed to Stone Throw yeah. Records. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. well, I want to move yeah. to LA yeah. and sign yeah, to Stone yeah, Throw yeah, Records. Yeah, yeah. And then I fucking <laughs> did, which is the craziest that's thing so ever. Sick, I just, we, met, we really manifested that. All right, yeah. pause for smoothie 
Smoothie I'm curious what y'all think. I got I got things to say. I got right. things on my mind. I, I know got what things I think. to say. Julius, you, you know, want to get in on a grimace? Me. I'm a big yeah. Erewhon Don, too. So. I am, too. Oh, okay. I've never met an Erewhon smoothie I don't like. Mm-hmm. But Julius, let's see what you think. Say. I have things to say. I got a lot of things to say. All right, so this is Emma Chamberlain. Yeah. Who, what is, is Emma Chamberlain an actress? She's an influencer. She she's started out on YouTube. YouTube. Well, like... Yeah, she. I think she's more than an influencer. She's, she's not. She makes she's, YouTube videos. She's not <laughs> tweeting shit for free. She, she not. actually has a coffee company, and this is a cold brew cookie crumble smoothie. Yeah, she do the Chamberlain coffee. Yeah. I think there's coffee in there. There's yeah, definitely there's coffee definitely, in definitely in there. coffee in here. Yep, um, which I'm not mad at. Okay, you guys go first. I mean, All right. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I got a lot of things to say. I'm this team is, Grimace. I'm Grimace. Grimace won the weekend for me. Like, if you were to put these two head to head, I we finished yeah. the Grimace and yeah. we did not finish Chamberlain. Yeah. I love Emma Chamberlain though. Man, they're so, okay. They're different. They're complete opposite ends of the spectrum, of course. Tart, bitter, sweet, creamy, delicious. The the uh, the kid the mayor McCheese kid in me that played at the McDonald's Playland and jumped in the ball pit really loves that grimace. Yeah, yeah. There is something very nostalgic about that that really hits like a lot of receptors. Man. Yep. It's, it's the sugar level of that McDonald's soft serve that goes in. It's yeah. Just like, oh, that's what I remember. <clears throat> yeah, the soft serve is yeah. it. But also yeah. the notes are incredible. It's like if David Chang's cereal milk mm-hmm. was made with like the fruity berry tricks yeah. and then mixed with funfetti ice cream, that's what this tastes like. This is the purple It tricks. tastes that's exactly tastes the like. way that it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I feel like, kind of hard to do at a, an institution like a McDonald's, yeah. but I guess they're... They're scientifically engineering it. They got scientific chefs out there. But now let's I talk am, about. I am fucking endlessly fascinated by McDonald's. Me too. I'm like obsessed. They with don't McDonald's. miss, bro. I don't eat at McDonald's really all more than like I don't know once a twice, twice a, a year, year twice maybe. A year. Yeah, if I go to Malibu, we may hit the Malibu <clears throat> McDonald's. Yeah, across the street from Nobu. Mm-hmm. I don't really <laughs> eat it that much. Yeah, but I am endlessly fascinated by mcdonald's yeah i think I it is Just one of the most fascinating things in the world i eat there because if somebody takes me to eat at nobu or to soho house i need to go to mcdonald's after yeah, <laughs> after I'm, like, I'm not satisfied <laughs> Nothing soho house for sure i've yeah. literally never been full after nobu in my life never never I always go to mcdonald's it's not that far. that's really funny but then that's really funny this smoothie what you think all right i i mean I actually really like the Emma Chamberlain smoothie a lot. Really? really okay, like good, good, okay. good, good, good. Because I don't okay. want to hate on her. I've even copped the Emma Chamberlain coffee. I support. It we reminds really. me a lot of the Oreo cheesecake at Cheesecake Factory, which I really fucking love. Minus, yeah. minus the cheesecake, but the, the Oreo cheesecake at Cheesecake Factory is mostly like chocolate and Oreo crumble mm. and whipped cream. Yeah, I did not like it. It it's like, it tastes like I'm eating vitamins, and like there is an element of it where, in the beginning, this may sound good, but it's like the Samoa Girl Scout cookie, blended with like a protein smoothie is what it tastes like. There's a bit of protein smoothiness yeah. and in then there. it overcomes the protein. <laughs> yeah, the protein smoothie vibes it overtakes, and then I'm like. Oh, I'm tasting supplements. You know what's crazy though? It it tastes it's crazy how they were able to make a smoothie that is clearly very not healthy, but yeah. kind of tastes healthy still though. Yeah, yeah I was it's the say, worst of everything. If you were to look yeah. at the calorie contents of both of these, yeah. I genuinely think they might be the same. Like, oh, I, I, I think I the Erewhon one is way you more. Think it's yeah, way more. It's dense. It's because like a I was dense like, drink. I don't think you're doing anything like for your health here. You no. Know? The, and, and there's like Aaron the Grimace one is probably healthier, Loki. Like, yeah. Save your money. It's less sugar. And just on get that. the Grimace. It's a Grimace, man. Like, Emma Chamberlain is a doll. She got smoked. And I she love got her. Smoked. And I love Erwan. 
so much. Grimace is a real Kanye. Emma Chamberlain <laughs> is a real 50 Cent. Grimace won. Yeah, Grimace Julius, won release day. Do you want to taste the Chamberlain? Grimace? But you liked it. He liked the Emma Chamberlain. I why do, do, I do, do you actually like really like the Emma Chamberlain one. I mean, I also am like, I'm older now. And Let's get Julius. I do have like on this. not a sweet tooth. Like all my teeth are yeah, sweet. You drop it but I am like getting to the point now where I don't want everything to be real sugary. You don't like, want that grimace. Yeah, I have that too. Hey, you might <clears throat> say you're health conscious. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> you're not, you're not you ordered the salmon. These allegations. Yeah. <laughs> you're not fighting the allegations. What you say, yeah. Julius? Say it by the microphone. She's trash. <laughs> It could be. It could be better. You heard it. Right, well, how'd you feel about the grimace, though? I mean, oh, you know what? You might need to be on camera. You need to be on camera for this. Really the grimace is grimace. incredibly sweet. I, All right, Julius, what do you think? I like the grimace. grimace. It's pretty good. But it's his I mean, birthday, so I'm a fuck with grimace. Yep, the grimace goes. I saw the most foul grimace meme goes. of about the grimace shake, and it was like grimace in. Uh, almost like bondage like being hung from a ceiling and they were like gotta go milk the grimace oh, <laughs> for like Jesus. more grimace smoothie oh my god Holy it was shit. really, oh it was really i did bad. see that one that was i want to try to find it that's so we pretty, can insert it but it was bad. it was really wild it, like it was it was not something yeah I that's, would we, like to keep we in don't, my brain we don't need that twitter yeah. we don't need that no but that's the best shit is on twitter twitter is the funniest for sure i and I, and as far as fun factor goes which yeah. is always how I, how I grade most things yes grimace way more fun oh for G sure the grimace shake infinitely more fun yeah it's a better color i think honestly there's something about a dome lid that not many people want it's not the classiest lid but when you get a drink with a dome lid you know yeah. shit's about to be great it's all right this is the last segment of the show we're starting this week because you're a very cultured man so i chose to do this on this episode Oh, I appreciate <clears throat> that. We really We're going to, wow. to start we do a lot, a lot of new things. things. We're wow. doing food reviews and film, but this is the movie of the week, all right? We're recommending the entire set, Yakuza Papers. This is my favorite, like, Yakuza series of all time. Is it the, Kurosawa? Fukusaku. Oh, Fukusaku, okay. So Fukusaku did Battle Royale, mm -hmm. which then became which, basically Hunger Games and Squid Games. Which, yeah. one of my favorite movies of the all best. time. The best. Beat Takeshi in there, and uh, but his series he's really known for in Japan is the Yakuza Papers, Battles Without Honor and Humanity. And I'm going to tell you some nerdy film school shit about this. This film, when you watch it, this is like why I like it is, it's like the Japanese mean streets in that it's not about like dudes that are good at crime. They're fucking knock around guys. They fuck up. They're bad at it. They get all fucked up. This came out the same year as Mean Streets, and the main character is very similar to Johnny Boy. And even when you watch, the camera work is very similar. There's like a two camera setup, and the way they like follow action, both films are similar. What year was this? This was in, I do not know the year, but I will tell you, I went on a nerd fucking rabbit hole after I finished this, and I was like, <clears throat> I wonder what came first, this or Mean Streets, because there's a lot of similarities. Mm. I went online, found it was the same year, and I found one film scholar that was like, don't know if anyone noticed this, but Yakuza Papers, Battles Without Honor and Humanity, comes out the same year as Mean Streets. And it's like, there's similarities. A lot of similarities. Mm. And like, it just made me feel that it was a really cool thing with artists, that when there is a vibration in the world and a feeling, similar art spins out and yeah. then that this happens a lot with music yeah happens a lot last fun fact and also because it's detroit fresh off the boat the theme song i got the sample from the theme song of yakuza papers hey wow. sent it to bruiser skywalker danny brown got on it fresh off the boat it's a detroit bruiser family. it's a family thing amazing wow love that oh my god do you have a movie that you've like watched recently yeah, that you, you would movie, recommend mm -hmm. i love movies i watch as many movies as i can i really like yeah, movies too um i mean 
like my favorite movie of all time by far is a big Lebowski. Oh, amazing. Well, we watched we it last week. We watched We watched it last week again. It's the best movie yeah. ever. It's the most perfect film I ever made. I kind of agree. So we have a funny question too, because we see them as kind of like companion-y films. Are you a Kill Bill guy or a Lebowski guy? I don't see them <clears> as <throat> companion really? films. Really? I don't. You do. I don't think that you can put them up against each other. I don't. Yeah, I got. I can't. I can't agree either. Yeah, I can't. They're not similar. It, I see them as they both play with the genre in a satirical, tongue-in-cheek way. Like the Lebowski is turning noir on its head, and then Kill Bill turns right, sure. the samurai crime film sure, on its yeah. head. Yeah. So uh, that's and they're I, from I like the best valid. directors of that valid. generation. So that's that. the only reason I, I think about them. But that's very valid. I don't Maybe think, it's a bad question. I don't think we can Emma Chamberlain. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I would. Wait, so I you're like Big Lebowski is your favorite film? I'm with you on that. I would say watch Past Lives, guys. If you haven't seen Past Lives, Past Lives is good. go to the theater, watch Past Lives. Really I phenomenal. I would also film. say the movie of the week for me was Les Innocence. On it's a French film. I don't know Ooh. who directed it. I Recent. honestly Criterion. Yeah, it's on Criterion. If you up. have that. And pull up the director and like, because I don't know yeah. anything about it. We just watched Lend it. The sense. It was so good. Yeah? It was I very cheeky I feel like I saw like a poster or, or a trailer yeah. or something for that recently. It's, it's newish, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I was like feeling a lot of things. You're laughing. You're sad. You're, you know, you, you go for a journey. And I like I mean, a movie that can like take me through film. a range. I'm in for a good French film all, yeah. always. Rec in recent years, that was the best film I've seen. Yeah. So. I've been like... Um, the the Godard, the mm. Band Apart has been like on the top of you know my, my wife and I have this like shared note that's like shit to watch yeah and it's just like a list of everything yeah. that we want to, that's like in the queue our our queue yeah like for what, movie night for movie night right half the time we're like scrolling trailers right you know? we, we Lewis Carell, we the don't, director. we're doing everything to make sure that yeah. we Lewis don't Carell. ever get stuck yeah. in the scroll yeah Lewis Carell is the director. Oh, what the hell? He's from The Dreamers. Oh. Oh, really? You seen that movie? Uh, oh my god. Oh my god, yes, he directed yes. it. He's incredible. Uh, he directed The Dreamers. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Actor. Yeah. He's in a lot of Oh, The French Dreamers films. was. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. legendary shit. Wow. He's great. This was an incredible film, The yeah. Innocent. All right, I'm putting that on the list. That's and then that's going in the Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's going on the queue. Show of, show of the month for us. Show of the month. Show of the month is Curb Your Curb. Enthusiasm. Do you respect that last question? Do you respect Wood? Do, do I respect wood? Do you leave yeah, wet what, drinks on what, wood? No, 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 I was going to say, what does I, that mean to okay, you? Okay, so I have the most, utmost respect for wood. In, uh, <laughs> Is this Larry David? The most, utmost respect for wood. <laughs> I don't respect wood. She does not respect wood. Mm -hmm. She came in and she almost, she did. did. No. Put a grimace. I mean, go look. Uh, yo, oh! yo, hold up. Look who does not respect wood. No. Yo, Julius does not wood. respect oh, wood. Out. He yeah. does not respect you wood. Don't, I see you come it. to my place? I see it like a zenith. It's okay. I don't respect wood either. That table is fucked I'm up. I'm going to tell you right thing. now, you come over for football at the crib and you put don't put your drink on the coaster, you're out. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to gift you coasters. Oh, we have plenty of coasters. No, oh, I just, I coasters. feel like I There's wanna, coasters I around. Bring oh, you, coasters. oh, you know what? Yes, we should because he hosts most of the football. I have vintage Baccarat crystal coasters. Ooh, Ooh. that sounds we'll sexy. Yeah, those are fancy coasters. That sounds sexy. You know? He likes it. Now we're he gonna wants get them. you on the Baccarat coaster yeah. wave. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, we got a okay. Baccarat guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shouts to Baccarat. Sure. Yeah, would sure. love it. You know, would That's love that as a sponsor. You know. It would be great. I would love but bro, some ritzy shit. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Man, this was so you. much fun. This was the best. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And we got to hang soon, all of us. All I, know, of us. I know, I know. It'll be fun.